Hello and welcome to the Be Glad movement. My name is Pollyanna and I'm on a mission to bring you as many stories as possible of good coming out of bad and reasons to be glad. And today I'm joined by Ebony Allard, who is the author of a book called Misfit to Maven. And actually there's a bit of a clue in the title there where her story lies. So I'm going to hand over to Ebony and let her get stuck in and tell her story. Hi Ebony, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Polly. Nice to be here. I love your movement. I love what you're doing. I think it's so important to share um, this. Thank you. Thank you. And you, I mean, your story, you've used, I mean, there's two stories here. because You've got a bit of an issue going on with Facebook at the moment, and I know you're turning that round to your benefit or to benefit other people. But why don't we start with, um, with Miss Victor Maven and how you came to be writing that book? Okay, so... I never really felt like I fit in. I didn't feel like I belonged. And, and I know that a lot of people can resonate with that feeling of feeling different or feeling othered or um, feeling that you need to be a certain way or show up in a certain way in order to fit in. And I spent a lot of my life um, doing that and really, first of all, kind of led to a burnout of over delivering and over achieving and you know, showing up too much in the TV industry, which is where I had my first career, um, and which led to a, a kind of burnout. And then shifted, and, and through that burnout, rather than allowing that to destroy me and, and feeling like it was the end of my career and, and all of those things, I really used the gaps that I could see and the things that weren't working for me in the lifestyle that I had to spur me on and to, and to lead me into my kind of second transition, if you like, or my second career, which was um, a personal assistant and, and virtual assistant business called My Girl Friday. Um, and from that, it's really interesting because I turned that bad into good by creating my own business and my own um, company doing something that we loved, working with people that I loved, with my, I've made my best friend, my business partners, kind of all of that stuff. And at the same time, I was still building a business based on shoulds, like how I thought you should run a company and what I could see from how everyone else was doing it. Um, and that kind of led to a breakdown where I was doing all the work and I was paying everyone else. And there's a whole load of other stuff in there about homelessness and £25,000 worth of debt and mental health struggles and kind of all of that stuff, which I don't want to go into because we, I want us to be able to kind of talk about the now. But that meant that I kind of had, again, this breakdown, which could have been a bad thing. And most people would consider having a breakdown and kind of being in that place a bad thing. And yet for me, it was an opportunity to connect with my vulnerabilities, connect with my more feminine side, to connect with the part of me that was looking for connection and looking to grow. And really that's what led me into coaching. Really that's what led me into kind of my next business and what became, first of all, the Entrepreneur Enabler and, and now is um, Mr. Enterprise and a, and a coaching and education company. And so I, I really believe that in adversity, there's always a gift and there's always an opportunity for us. Yeah, well, it's the, it's the message I'm trying to get out to the world as well. So um, yeah. I love that there's that alignment. Um, so you, you, you had a career in TV, then you yeah. had um, burnout, a bit of a breakdown then, and then you started a business. Did you say My Girl Friday was the name of your mm -hmm. business? Um, yeah. And again, you were still trying to conform to what other people thought that should look like rather than what you felt that should look like which led to another breakdown but that then helps you connect with who you felt you really were you I, I love that you say your your feminine side as well do you think that in the tv industry and, and um running your own business sort of channeled your more male energy beforehand was that going on well, i feel like society has taught us for the most part, um, and it is starting to shift and change, but for the most part, that to be successful in business, we've got to work harder, hustle harder, you know, stick our shoulders out, puff our chest up and go for it. And that was very much what I had seen. And any, everyone I could see around me were either businessmen um, or women who were kind of emulating that kind of 80s, you know, power suit model. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was conscious. I absolutely believe that it was unconscious. And and a kind of personality trait of looking to 
others to see how, what the rules were and how I should be behaving or how I should be showing up in order to be loved, in order to be received or understood even, because I think it's a huge part of being a misfit is feeling misunderstood and feeling like if you're your true self, if you show up as you, no one's going to get you. And so for me, the turning point actually was um, feeling really suicidal, having shared that information with my brother, um, having him telling my mum, which is the last thing I wanted, but her then uh, taking me out on trip to a walk in the middle of the countryside where she waited until there was nowhere for me to run or hide and said to me, what's going on? Please let me know. Please try and communicate what's going on for you in your head. And I really tried and she really tried to understand and she didn't. And so nothing could be solved overnight or there wasn't that kind of, oh yes, I can mend you and here's how. But her empathy and her desire to try helped me recognize that there were people in my life who, who wanted to help and, and who were there to support me in navigating a change and, and a way forward. And so for me at that time, I went to the doctor and I got some antidepressants and I um, f used them, not for a huge period of time. And I, I don't think there's anything right or wrong. I don't, one way or another, I thought, think we're already very unique. But for me, they gave me enough. It was like someone had opened a window and let in some light and let in some air. And for the first time in a really long time, I could breathe. My head was no longer just cotton wool. The cogs were actually able to turn in there. And I it was like, yeah, like my whole body sighed a relief and I could see a small part of me again that I'd lost. And from that place, I made the decision to... Um, sublet my room, sell everything I had of any, event, any value and I bought a ticket, a plane ticket to Bali. And I went to Bali and it was like, this is going to save me. This is going to be the place where I will learn uh, to be happy. And what actually happened is within six weeks, I had recreated my whole life. I had six entrepreneurs that I was working for um, as their assistant and, and kind of coaching them, which is what led me into that shift and change but helping them to create the lifestyles that they wanted and the money that they wanted and helping them to help other people as well. And I suddenly realized that no matter where I want, went in the world, I would still be there. And it was that moment that for me was like, okay, well now it's time for me to figure out who I really am and learn to like whatever I find or change until I do. And that for me is what has changed everything. That commitment to myself to discover who I really am and or change until I do like it means that I like who I am. And it's so powerful just to have that own relation that relationship with yourself. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then, I think that's a really key point that you made about so going to Bali, I want to say running away, um, but then realising that you're always there. Wherever you go, it's still you that's going with you, <laughs> you know. We can have these dreams, but you have to like yourself on the inside first. Um, and I also like that you say about changing yourself, because I think a lot of people sometimes get stuck in the rut of thinking that they just are one particular way, and, and, and it's only one way, but actually we're also multifaceted there's so many things that we can enjoy and there's so many things that we can embrace we let ourselves but we've got a society sort of telling us you need to be this way or this is the best way to look or think or eat or drink or you know all those things so um it's really good that you have that sort of that turning moment and um and now and and coaching people i thought that was another interesting point and i think this is a, a trait that women quite often have it's easier or we find, find it naturally more easier to help other people than help ourselves is that mm. something that you've noticed about yourself a little bit maybe the fact that you were coaching these other people and and bringing the best out in them i genuinely think it was from a place of wanting excellence and not believing and 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 wanting seeing uh, seeing the places or the blind spots of the people that I was working with and being able to be very subjective about 
what was working and what wasn't working and, and seeing their business as a whole. So I was only working with entrepreneurs, but I didn't believe that I could be an entrepreneur. I didn't believe that I, that someone like me could have anything like that, you know, and, and a lot of that actually is around what I would have called then, you know, being a misfit, because at that point I had been told my whole life that I was an extrovert. And the truth is I'm not, I'm an introvert. And, you know, a lot of my breakdown and a lot of the kind of struggles that I had was really from feeling like I had to show up as an extrovert when really it was killing me. I was just exhausted. Like all the whole thing was I just had no idea how to take care of myself and to manage my own energy. And, and so that, investigation into learning who I really was involved that like how how does it work best for me like where do I recharge best and am I someone who likes to be surrounded by other people or am I someone who likes a lot of quiet time and that thing that we have about identity that it's static right and that we just are how who we are is one of the biggest lies out there it's so fluid you get to be whoever you want to be and it will shift and change and it can shift and change. And I have moments of extroversion and I can be someone who loves to be around other people and is energized, but actually intrinsically under all of that, I'm someone who likes a lot of alone time and knowing that has really helped me to create a business and a life that fuels me and allows, allows me to support other people whilst also taking care of myself. And I think it's that bit that women don't always have, is that belief that they can have it all, that they can have both, that somewhere along the lines, for a lot of us at least, there's this idea that we can have one thing or another thing, or if we try and have it all, we'll lose ourselves, right? Like we still can't have everything that we want. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I think... For me, a big message there is sort of around, you know, allowing yourself the time to understand yourself, you know, because we do, we, do, we get caught up on this treadmill of, of life and don't ever sort of stop and think, well, I'm, you know, am I really, I mean, I used to get called a Daisy Dora when I was little, so I've always sort of, maybe I've even played up to it a little bit in some cases, you know, oh, ditzy me, Daisy Dora, you know, but actually... I can be quite switched on when I need to be and um but there was a moment that, and I remember it very clearly actually and this isn't this isn't about me but um I'm overtaking your your time now but I remember when I was working at a computer I just started a new job and this um chap who was training me sort of said oh you're picking up really quickly no one's picked it up this quickly before this is brilliant and I was like really because I'm a Daisy Dora do you know what I mean and uh, and and I had this moment of hey actually maybe I am a bit more switched on if I need to <laughs> but, um, just and I love that like it's so interesting in terms of this idea of um you know t finding the good in the, the bad is like looking at with awareness like where are we compliant with the labels that we're given because it's easier you know and and it can be easier for us to for people to think that we are a certain way and so my my brand is, is working with people who are misfits so people that i describe as uh, too creative too innovative too geeky or just too full of heart um to clock in and clock out of a job and quite often people will have made judgments about them by the way that they look, the way they talk, the way that they think, or you know, those kind of things. And sometimes it's easier for us to let either let them think that or become that, right? So I spent a lot of time with people at school saying, she's disruptive. And I wasn't until I may as well have been because that's what they told me I was anyway, you know? And so we buy into these labels, but we don't have to, we have a choice. We can opt out of them. Mm. Tell me a bit more about your business. So say if I, maybe I wouldn't be the ideal customer for you, but say if I was um, just starting a business and I like, liked what I saw in you and came to you, how, what kind of services do you offer, I guess, is what I'm asking. How do you guide someone through their business? So my book that you mentioned is a really great place for people to start. And I think it's a great place for people to start because I'm someone who shares all of it. And um, there's a lot of very shiny people out there who want to show you how successful they are. And I don't feel like there's enough people showing you the, the route that they took to get there or where things didn't work out or the possible pitfalls that they went through. And so for me, it's really important to share that, to share how real 
my experiences and how I have success now, but it wasn't always that way and the things that I've navigated and overcome. So the book is a really great access point. And then I have um, a course, which is kind of do it yourself, work at your own pace online course, which is called The Foundations, Miss Fit and The Foundations. Um, and that guides you through eight pillars of practice and um, with workbooks and videos. And again, opportunities for you to start with answering these questions for yourself and finding out who you really are but also if you're just starting a business finding out who your clients really are and the kind of people that you really want to work with on a deeper level so that you can speak to them and market to them in a way that really resonates and works and then i guess the kind of next level up from that we call misfit to maven 360 or m 360 which is a community space where we look at the whole of your life not just your business because the way that you do anything is the way that you do everything and there is no separation really between your work life or your personal life or your family life or you know all of those different sections so in there we work through the pillars and then the three cornerstones of booming business which are um, health and wellness systems and procedure and sales and marketing and so we go through the pillars in a kind of figure of eight over and over again uh, with live coaching sessions for me guest trainers once a month that come in and will do kind of a skill session about something that they are working on in particular um, we have a book club um, and we're just introduced as we grow office hours as well. So I have four at the moment certified Mr. Tomeven coaches that hold the space on the weeks that I'm not coaching so that there's so much accountability and community. And the reason we have that in there is because it's really lonely when you first start out. Um, particularly if you're doing something different or you feel different already um, or you're breaking away from your friends or your family, which quite a lot of people are when they've taken that courageous decision. And then they don't know where to go for support and they're holding it all together and they're telling their friends and family, yeah, it's all going really well because they need to see them doing well. So the community space is a really great place for, for you to be your real self and to experiment and play and learn who you really are and try these things out and have uh, brainstorming sessions and, and all of the rest of it. Um, yeah. So those are the kind of main entry level things that we have for people who are just starting out. Yeah. I can feel the energy coming off of you when you're talking about it. It's clearly something you're really proud of and, and passionate about. So um, I can imagine that it is. I love seeing the results of people. You know, people come in anxious and overwhelmed and angry and frustrated and just foggy and like so unsure of themselves and they leave with clarity and confidence and courage and then this sense of calm and the tools for how to be there and in those places and access that stuff not just in their business but in their whole lives and for me you know I, I have a podcast as well which is called adulting with ebony but that's what adulting really is from a responsible place is, is taking care of ourselves so that we can take care of each other thanks um Tell us a little bit, I know you've had a bit of a nightmare recently um, with Facebook and because obviously you do a lot of work online and it's had a massive impact on your business. Mm. You're turning it around, aren't you, and, and using this experience to safeguard other people, really. So tell us a little bit about what happened there. So about a month ago, I woke up to a notification saying that I'd been removed as an admin on my page and didn't really think anything of it. Um, but followed the steps that it had said. I was, and, and, and another message that said I'd violated Facebook's community standards. And I had no idea what I'd done and I wasn't really sure, but I sort of followed the steps and, and went to verify myself by giving them my uh, driving license and, and, and my passport and on two different occasions and like filling in all the stuff. And I had to take a picture of, of me and kind of go through these processes. And it's all automated and it's a computer process. And essentially what that happened is they said, no, we've deactivated your account um, for violation of, of, of community standards. And I couldn't work out what I'd done. So I was trying to work that out. My Instagram also disappeared. Um, and so I was appealing all over the place being like, but I don't know what I've done. And I couldn't get any information on it. Um, and I went through the appeal process and got my Instagram back. So that felt good. Um, and then sort of over the next couple of days, it transpired. So they, they then come back to me and said, no, it's been permanently disabled. You will not have it back. And I was really frustrated because I couldn't work out what I'd done. Um, 
And to this day, Facebook actually haven't communicated with me. No one has said, sorry, no one has said, this is what's going on, this is what happened. Um, as someone who has been around and, and hasn't had an online business for five years, my Facebook business page was verified and had a blue tick and had a large number of followers. And all of that disappeared. Um, and it very quickly became clear that somehow somebody had hacked into my business page and was now spamming the internet and my phone number was still available on there. And what I couldn't see was that my image had been replaced and the uh, page was now for sale in India as, and Bangladesh and Malaysia as a blue tick verified account. And so beyond that, I can't tell you much more other than someone on my Instagram told me that that was probably what happened. And she was in India, so she could see this IP, uh, could see the page, which I couldn't because my IP address had been blocked. And she gave me a screenshot of what she could see, which um, there was lots of sex and guns involved. That's kind of all I can say. And my phone number was on there. So I was getting hundreds of picture messages and phone calls um, and voice messages from India, Bangladesh, Pakistan and Malaysia. And then it went into UEA and Sudan and uh, just a lot of traffic through. And they were very disappointed when they reached me and not what they were trying to get hold of. And I don't really know beyond that. It's still being investigated. Facebook, I'm lucky that I have a client who has a contact in Facebook. And so we've uh, they are not allowed to investigate it because they know me. Um, but she has been able to continually reopen the case. And um, there's police involvement, there's much higher involvement, there's kind of a lot going on. But what that's meant for me and my business is that I've been really distracted and as an introvert, I've had to deal with a lot of incoming, um, yeah, just stuff coming at me, which has been really difficult to deal with. Um, my team who still have access to, so my Facebook groups disappeared, my Facebook page disappeared, my profile disappeared. Every, all my contacts since 2006 disappeared, like the community spaces that we hold, if I was the only admin, they disappeared. So there's just been a lot to negotiate um, in terms of the logistics of running a business that has Facebook groups as part of it and, and kind of all of the, the rest of those things. So it's been pretty full on and really interesting. And then the team have had to deal with a lot of messages on Facebook that they can see a lot of requests to our Facebook group from people that wouldn't normally be trying to access the Facebook group. Um, and we've, so as a result, some things have happened. We've um, really tightened our security on places, uh, really looked at, we were using LastPass already and we, we didn't have the same passwords for anything, but we've been shifting and upgrading the level of security that we have across platforms and how we share information. Um, and it also stopped me from being on Facebook, right? So, and for the first couple of days, I still had the app on my phone and I still found my thumb making its way to this app, like off and like, like a habit right like this impulse and it took a couple of days of deleting the app before i stopped reaching for my phone all the time to check and i've really enjoyed not being so involved in my so involved in my community i, I love my community but i was had become accustomed to being really available and so that's been really interesting. And then what's also been interesting has been getting clear on what I want and my vision for the business and for the future. And at the beginning of this year, I set myself the goal of taking a sabbatical for a period of time at the beginning of 2019. And over the course of the year, we've had relative success and more relative, you know, success and in the, in the sort of forms of money, but then also in uh, recognition. So I won International Coach of the Year. And what that's done has been really interesting because when you are a misfit or a creative, 
it's your job to be a misfit and creative. But when you're also trying to build something successful, it's very easy to become homogenized and to start following the crowd and to do, look at your peers and see what they're doing and think that you ought to be doing that as well. So having that space that the kind of Facebook thing gave me allowed me to really evaluate what is it that I really want. And so I have made the decision to stop coaching one-to-one -one next year. I've got one mastermind available that I'm launching in the next couple of days after we speak. And the only way to work with me will be one-to-one -one will be in that mastermind or through M2360, which we spoke about before. And I've created the space to allow me to play and to go into other projects and things. Okay. And he's, so I'm going to mute myself while I cough at you. Sorry. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> mm. These things always happen, right, when you, you don't need them to. Um, I'm sure there's going to be people that are watching and going, oh, <laughs> probably been watching thinking, she's the coach for me. And then, you know, but um, you, you are essentially still coaching through masterminds. It, um, it sounds like it was almost like Facebook enforced that little break on you in a way, really. Um, I know that you're using um, your experiences to, to actually do some training on Friday. I say Friday. I'm hoping that I might be able to get this video out um, <laughs> before then. <laughs> but things have been a bit crazy recently. But, um, yeah, I love that you are using this experience. Well, I love that you say about how you observed, you know, what it felt like, that your thumb kept going towards the Facebook icon, that, you know, you observed that you... So felt a little bit, although you loved, loved your community, you felt a bit more relaxed about being away from them. And it's, I just love the way you're using it as a learning curve. You know, that it's, it's a horrible situation. What did you say? Sex and guns. <laughs> who wants who wants loads of phone calls from people on the other side of the world requesting sex and guns? But you know, um, you're you're using this as a as a positive and and seeing what you can draw out of it. And I think that that's something that I've learned over the years through business and that my coaching, um, both being coached and my coaching practice, because it is that, you know, as a coach, we're, to, for me, if you're a really good coach, you're still learning from every single client and interaction and experience that you have. And, you know, that's what this is about. It's about resilience. It's about look, really believing under it all that the universe has got our back, right? Like that there's nothing that happens there is an accident and that whilst we quite often can't see where this is going or what the reason for it is and quite often when we ask to learn something or we ask for an outcome or we've got a goal or a vision we've also got a how in our head and it's not our job to figure out how it's our job to stay really focused and centered on what it is that we want and so what it is that i wanted was more time and more space to paint and I've just released a kids book and I've uh, been painting every day and I've got some new stuff that's coming through and the kind of artistic side of me really wants to come out and play more so it's not like I'm disappearing into and not doing anything I will be very uh, visible and I'm still going to be doing things in the community but I'm allowing this opportunity to to be just that like okay well this has happened what what lessons am I learning here? And I think that when um, unwanted circumstances arise, we can either fight against them and say, I wish this wasn't happening, or, or why is this happening to me? And neither of those are useful questions. It's a much more useful question to ask, what am I learning here and what is this an opportunity for? And for me, it was an opportunity to, for my team to step up and to see whether they could cope without me. And they've done a fantastic job. And actually, they're much better without me breathing down their necks and telling them how to do things, right? Mm -hmm. And it's an opportunity for me to say, okay, well, what do I really want to be doing? And I really want to be coaching, but I want to coach one small group over a period of, of, of nine months. And, you know, the mastermind that I'm launching on Friday is... Is, is everything that I have always wanted to do. And that feels edgy and it feels uncomfortable again, as does sharing my art. And I think often we can get complacent or too comfortable. And if we're truly people who 
are here to grow and to learn and to evolve, then then we need to keep doing that. <laughs> and that's by asking better questions and looking at, right, what, what is this an opportunity for? And what could I be learning here? And, and for me, that's what this process has really been about, has been about recognizing all the times before that I felt uncomfortable or that things, um, circumstances felt like they weren't going in my favor. And then looking at well, what happened actually? Where did I end up as a result of that? And, what, and the evidence that I've got when I look from that lens is that things have always worked out for me and I've gone deeper and, and wider and found more fulfillment and satisfaction and been able to help more people. And so I see this as an opportunity for that. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me and, and telling me your story. I really enjoyed hearing about it and uh, I hope you managed to get the whole Facebook I know it's not resolved yet so I hope you managed to get that sorted out soon but thank you so much absolute pleasure and yeah if anyone I, I, it's really interesting for me as we talk I'm like you know as you said um there might be people here going she's the exact right coach for me and I'm not available that's it's I want to share that that's something that I still sit with and I'm you know I as a coach can say well you need to niche and you need to get really clear on like who you want to work with and you can't work with everybody right you just don't have the bandwidth so you get to choose and even now five years into my coaching business as I hear that I'm like oh, I'm going to be letting someone down and and it's not true, right? Because there is, I've got something for the beginning, people at the beginning of their journey and then this opportunity for people to work. Later, we've got some online courses that other ones that are kind of in between and there's more and more stuff coming through that enables me to connect. But I, I just want to share that I still have that thing of like, I wish I could help everyone. <laughs> Oh, well, that was the last thing I wanted to do was make you feel guilty. <laughs> no, 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 I know, I know. But I also just want to share that because I know that people watching feel like, oh, I sh you know, people always tell me that I should be niching and everyone is doing it and they feel really comfortable doing it. And we do, but it's also, there is always that I wish I could help everyone that kind of comes through. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But I guess going back to the whole burnout situation, if you try and help everyone, you might end up in a situation where you can't help anyone. And uh, you are helping so many people because you've got those different filters down and, and the, the different um, sort of training material that you offer to people. So um, you are... You are and, it, and it's my job to model that, like um, taking care of yourself and not burning out, not over delivering and being really able to do that. So it does come from a very conscious place. Um, they're just, yeah, there's still buttons in the way I'm like, mm, I wish, you know. <laughs> oh, <definitely. clears throat> oh, well, thank you so much for joining us. I'll share all the links to all your pages at the end of the video so that people can follow along and, and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and you'll get notifications when new videos are uploaded. You can uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter if you search at Be Glad Movement. And please do get in touch if you've got a story that you'd like to share. It doesn't matter if it's similar to somebody else's story, because I really do think that your story and your voice has the ability to help someone in their time of need. So please do get in touch and I look forward to seeing you in another episode. Many thanks. <laughs>